Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to explain how a pulse card dialer works. These units require 18 volt um, AC power supply. Here you can see is the type of power supply I'm using. And since it is AC, it doesn't really matter which wire you connect onto P1 and P2. These are the power terminals for the card dialer. And as you can see, this unit is missing the start button, but it still has the release button. So you just insert in a card like so, and then it will dial this card here is a blank. Here you can see is a cardboard card I made. This one was laser cut. I'm hoping to make acrylic ones so I won't have to punch out original cards. So as you can hear and see, the, the actual punched card requires longer to go through the system as it is. Rotating this disc, which I'll explain more on that, more on that in a second. And the release bar is just in case you decide not to dial this particular card or it gets stuck for some reason. So these units, um, this one I received, uh, it was not really functional when I got it. I had to disassemble most of it and then oil and clean the electrical contacts inside. The solenoid valve here that is responsible for moving to the next row on the card. So as you can see when this clicks, it goes to the next row on the card. Or if you push the release bar, it just releases it completely. So this is the motor that rotates when it is dialing. So that was the blank card. And how a rotary dialing phone works is it has two contacts. This is a model 500 dial. So one of them is the pulse contact here, which is normally closed. But when it is dialing, it opens for short periods of time, which create the different digits or signify the different digits. So if you dial one, that's the shortest and it only opens one time. If you dial two, it opens twice. And if you dial zero, it opens 10 different times. So the con the um, idea with this one is it's basically an automatic rotary dialer. So this wheel here actually creates the pulses. And it's ratcheting. As you can see, I just rotated it all the way to the end, and then it can't go any further. And then this, when it goes to the next digit on the card, releases the wheel back to its starting position. And then the motor will continue rotating So here's and these cards are pretty 
um, pretty smartly designed actually that you just punch if you wanted to dial one you would punch out a hole on this row and then a hole on this row and that would dial one if you want it to pause dialing during the process you punch out a hole along the stop line here and this is for a um, tone dialing one I have some of the pulse dialing cards look slightly different and also there was auto von sets and um, there's lots of different variants um, most of the time you can use the same similar cards across all models but for rotary dialers they don't actually have star and pound So then, how you actually connect it into your phone's network, or the, just the main part of the phone so it can actually dial out, are on these contacts here on the back. One on two, three on four, and five and six. And these one on two and three on four contacts right there basically perform the same task as the C's um, the C's contact on here so when you're dialing this contact right there closes and shorts the headset and then it reopens after you're finished dialing and this unit has two different connections here though in case you wanted to have an optional speaker phone three on four connection here is for the speaker phone and one on two is just the normal connection point so i'm going to use a voltage meter with a continuity test so when you tap the two wires together it makes a beeping noise Now if I just attach the alligator clip, here I'm just going to hold it. So if I insert in a blank card, You can see it did not seize the line at all, which is how it should normally operate because if you're not dialing a number, this is normally open. So since the card was blank, it should not close the contact, otherwise it might register a false digit. So here's with a typed card, punched out card here so there you can see it seizes the line it seizes between these two contacts when it's actually dialing a digit Five and six are the pulse dialing terminals. So if I can hold it steady, these are normally seized, just like the contacts on a rotary dialing phone. The pulse dialing contacts here are normally closed and then they open when you're dialing. So if you dial a digit, they actually open. So these perform the same task, five and six. Three and four perform basically the same as one and two, except they will seize even if the card is blank. So here you can see. It still seizes the line each time it's 
um, going to the next row, even though there was no number punched. And then lastly, if you're having issues with your unit malfunctioning, I found uh, with this unit, the main issue was the motor because some of these sit for a long period of time that the motor will get dead spots on it so it won't get good electrical contact in some areas or otherwise uh, just it needs oiling so what I was able to do is you can see there's holes right here and then wait yeah there's holes here and then this is the third screw there's three screws that hold in the motor so you can remove those and then I was able to lubricate the motor and if you insert in a card and then push start that engages the motor but if it doesn't actually move this wheel it won't move to the next digit so the motor can just keep running for about 10 minutes or so that will definitely help to remove any dead spots in the motor so you can just get more sm uh, smooth fluid operation so I hope this video helps anyone who's trying to restore one of these units and uh, if you have any questions or comments just let me know thanks for watching this video and be sure to check out the other videos on my channel